Time to fix yet another MacBook. Here we have a MacBook that Anel tried to fix and then left for me. Let's see what's wrong with this MacBook. And let's see if the new person that I hired is about to get fired. He says that it's only giving us five volts on the charger and not 20 volts. So I'm gonna plug in this USB-C amp meter and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to confirm whether or not that's true. So it takes 5.1 volts and draws 20 milliamps. Typically it's drawing 1 to 200 milliamps when it's about to jump to 20, but here it's not. It's drawing 20 milliamps steady. Now Anel claims that he's replaced both CD3215 chips. Let's see if that's correct. Let's also see what his soldering job was like and see if it's put on there properly. MacBook. MacBook. Much Mac. Look at all these resistors knocked from side to side. My Jesus. Who votes this is time for a firing? Are you even soldered to the board? Fired. Screw you! You're fired! First thing we're gonna do is see what happens when we put those resistors soldered onto the board nicely. Oh yeah, Joe Martin, that is clear focus. And the thing is, I'm never gonna be able to get one of these microscopes again because I have yet to find a single company or factory still making them with the tube that makes it look this good. They're all using that long tube that makes it really hard to focus and gives you all that big netting and all that gross, disgusting nonsense. I wish I could find these again, but unfortunately, can't. So I'm gonna keep this microscope working for as long as humanly possible. Yeah, I wanted to call and let you know that I am uh, incredibly, tensely, incredibly aggravated that I just got my computer back with a label, 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 label on it that was near impossible to remove. I wanted to let you know that's a disgusting practice of complete disrespect. The disgusting practice of complete disrespect. Label, 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 label on it. Make sure these are properly flowed in place. Now, it looks like we are still stuck at five volts. Our USB-C amp meter does not show it going to 20. The next thing I'm going to do is check and see if PP3V3 underscore G3 hot is present because PP3V3 underscore G3 hot needs to be present in order for us to get this chip working at all. PP3V3 underscore G3 hot is present. Now are you going into the chip? That's the other question. So PP3V3 underscore G3 hot is going to go into the chip through R3000 and there's also going to be another one that does the same thing. PP3V3 underscore G3 hot goes into the chip through this resistor, R3001. Hmm. So what are the values that these resistors are supposed to be? According to Paul Daniels, a software that's supposed to be a zero ohm resistor. Let's see if it's measuring zero ohms. The left one seems good because I have voltage on both sides. So what's going on over here? Hmm. The resistor seems a little sickly. Unfortunately, that resistor's working. If it wasn't working, it might give us a reason as to why the board is not functioning. Hmm. Let's see if it's passing voltage properly. Interesting. It's not passing voltage properly. But how could that be? The resistor just measured zero ohms. It's supposed to be passing our 3.3 volts through. Let's see. We have 3.3 volts there. 3.4 here. And 1.4 at the capacitor. What? So PP3V3 underscore G3 hot is supposed to come in through R3001. R3001 is where PP3V3 underscore G3 hot is then going to be allowed to enter the CD3215. So it's going to have a path through that resistor to this capacitor to here. But now it's over here, but not there. So why is the pathway between this and this broken? Or is that pathway broken? One way to find out. Let's zoom in a little bit. That is really interesting because it doesn't look like that path has any damage. But that voltage going up and down there would indicate that a pathway in the board is broken. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my micro pencil. And you can find out where to get a micro pencil like this by looking at the links in the description down below. You do receive a commission if you do use those links. And by the way, I have noticed a little bit of a pickup in people using those links. And 
Thank you very much. We genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate it anytime you buy something from those links below, or even just check it out if you don't plan on buying something. You are all too kind. Okay. Interesting. So there's nothing for me to really solder to here. Yep, and there's no pad under there. Okay, so that's just got to go. Yeah, so I was noticing as I was trying to solder the wire that even though there was conductivity on the top of the resistor, there was no conductivity on the side of the bottom of the resistor. And I'm talking about thermal conductivity in terms of I can solder to it and solder will stick. And it wasn't all, it just wasn't responding at all to anything I was doing. Thermal conductivity is the wrong word there. I'm being an idiot, but you get the idea. Like I was trying to solder to it and getting nowhere. So even though the top of the resistor was conducting, the bottom of it wasn't. That's something. Wow. See, so, yeah, when people say measure this, measure that, the top of the resistor was conducting and the bottom wasn't. That, that's an interesting case. So perhaps if we clean the bottom of this resistor off, pad off, we won't even need to have an, a wire. It's just going to take a little bit of gentle scraping, so some flux, some solder, some heat. And some back and forth scrapity scraping. I'm going to turn the board a little so that it's more comfortable for me. Remember, you don't care about the board's comfort, you care about your own. See, this way it's going to be much more comfortable for the scrapey scrape. Okay. Now we're going to get ourselves a zero ohm resistor. It's hard to fit in there due to those capacitors that are in the way. Perhaps if we turn the board around yet again. Now we're going to let the board cool off using our rapid cool technology. Rapid cool technology. As you can see, barely, we are now getting 20 volts on the charger, and it's taking 500 mi to 600 milliamps, which is what I would expect a healthy MacBook to be taking when it's fixed. So all this needed was a single resistor that was zero ohms that's, I imagine, acting as either a fuse or a jumper to be replaced that sits between PP3V3 underscore G3 hot, which is the power line that powers our CD3215s, and the CD3215. So that's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. Do you have a MacBook that needs to be fixed? Come by our store, which is open to the public at 186 First Avenue in Manhattan. Are you located outside of New York? No problem. Send us a machine from anywhere in the world by going to our website and clicking on the mailbox or simply heading over to sendyourmacbook.com. That's sendyourmacbook.com where you'll be redirected to our mail-in instructions page that includes the form and the directions on how to send us a MacBook for repair. We have a live chat where you can speak with us about the repair that you need 
a phone number where a representative will pick up during our open hours, and a contact form where contact us about repairs. 